All right, so let me uh, make a note here uh, so that you can have it on your notes when you get this at the end of the day when we were talking about permalinks and such. Permalinks for SEO. It's much more valuable to have something like mysite.com slash about instead of you know the alternative instead of mysite.com slash question p equals two seven whatever. For SEO this is very bad. For SEO this is very good. So that's why you want to set up permalinks like we just did. So set your permalinks setting to anything besides plain or numeric. Suggestion postname. That's the one here. Postname. That's the suggestion. Um, for better SEO. It has more meaningful addresses. The, the search engines see this. If you take my SEO class, there's so many topics to talk about in there because you might have an amazing website, but it's not getting traffic. Well, there's a lot of reasons why it's not getting traffic. One of them most likely, or could be, that your, even your addresses are wrong because these addresses here have no meaning. The default address of numbers has no meaning. That's why you want to set this. You want to set pretty permalinks. You want to set it something meaningful like the post name. Now just for, for the full info here, if you're using WAMP, activate rewrite module. That means if you're not using WAMP, if you're using MAMP on the Mac, or if you're doing this, on Bluehost or HostGator or GoDaddy, this should be already active. It just seems to be a little bug in WAMP that you have to activate the rewrite module. That will then rewrite the bad names into the good names. If you don't turn that on, you'll get broken links everywhere. If we visit site, here's our home page, you know, we still can work on it design-wise and such, and we'll talk about that later. But um, we've got a home screen here, all of this is editable, of course, we've got home, contact us, we've got an external link of eBay. Um, regarding SEO, take the SEO class for all the detail, but I'll be sprinkling things in, of course. I'm going to say here, uh, SEO tip, log. Uh, by creating content on a regular basis, you can get better search engine ranking. I want to get to the first page of a Yahoo search, or a Bing search, or a, Yahoo, or a Google search, whatever. I want to get to the top search results. I have an amazing looking site. Well, that's not enough. You need content. Take the SEO class. Take the blogging class where we go into detail. In short, for this class, think about does your site have a blog? And a blog is just articles, things that you write on a regular basis. Short answer, goal. Once per month, 100 words. You're going to see plenty of other articles and tutorials and whatever that are going to tell you 500 words every week. Yes, of course, that's better. More content on a much more regular basis. But if you've never done any blogging, any writing, a hundred words once a month is way better than zero words zero times a month. So any amount of effort that you're doing regarding blogging is going to help you with your SEO. Because, again, taking the blogging or, or the SEO class, it's all about keywords. It's all, it's all, all about topics. Create articles using keywords to help you get found. If I'm a bakery, 
I could write an article about the top five alternatives to sugar. Someone could probably search that. People are tired of sugar. So much sugar in our diets. Well, I like sweet stuff, but I, you know, I don't want, what's an alternative to sugar? So someone's going to type that on Google. Someone's going to type that on, on Bing. Someone's going to ask their phone, what's an alternative to sugar? And if you've got an article that is that title, an alternative to sugar, or top five alternatives to sugar, you know, these keywords and such, people can find that article, can find your site. The search engines will see your site is updated, it's current, it has content. So what we're going to do then is activate a blog on this site. We're not going to, we're not going to do a lot with it. We have other things to talk about, but I'm going to start to, to mention that, that if your site doesn't have a blog, that could be one of the reasons why you're not getting traffic. So here's what we need to do. Wherever you are in your site, you want to go back to the dashboard. Click on Posts. On day one, the Hello World article was written. Every brand new WordPress has Hello World. And we took a moment to write a how to bake a pecan pie. Um, article. Wait a minute, if I go back to the to the front end, I don't see that anywhere. I don't see that blog post service, not even on the menu. So we have a few things to do in order for this to be fully set up. Write articles, show them on our menu, and so forth. So we have we have one article there as part of our blog, but it's not um, it's not visible yet. It's not part of our menu yet. This is a this is a catch twenty two. It's kind of hard to explain to a beginner for the first time. We have to do like three things at once. I wish we could do all three of these things at once. We need an article. We need it on the menu, and we need to set it in the settings. We need to do all those three things. So we'll we'll do one first here. I'll write them down here. Set your blog uh, placeholder in the settings in the reading settings. Set your blog placeholder in the menu of the site and then write articles. We can easily write articles but if you don't do those two other over there they might not be found just like that pecan pie article is there but no one can see it. I think this will be the best order. Uh, well, actually, there's a step zero. Create a blog placeholder page. We need to have a placeholder to display some sort of screen to display all of our blog posts. We don't have that yet, so we need to create that. Then that placeholder, we need to put it in the settings, and then in the menu, and then it'll work. Let's go look at our pages. I believe I mentioned it previously, but very quickly. Pages are screens on your site that don't change, whereas posts are these articles that you update once a month. Your page, your page is here. We've got so far contact page, home, which is set to the front page, and sample page, which we should delete at some point. And we need here then a page, a placeholder for our blogs. Let's click at the top here, make sure you're under pages, because you have add new on every screen, add new media, add new page, add new post, add new product. So make sure you're in the right place. Under pages, add new. We'll call this blog. We'll write something very brief like our articles. I'm running the blogging class right now, actually, Fridays, Friday morning, 9.30 a.m. down in 110. 9.30 to 1. 9.30 a.m. to 1. We had day one last week, and you're welcome to come to the 
to day two. I have to double check how much space I have left. I think it was good if it was still like 10 or 15 spots. So if you're interested in the blogging class, which is another aspect of SEO, come Friday mornings, 9.30 a.m. We've got a page called blog. We've got something. Click publish on the right side. So we created a blog placeholder page. Let's go to our reading settings and set this blog as the placeholder. So that means go to settings, reading, We did this a while ago. The default was that WordPress will automatically show you your latest articles. We didn't want that. We wanted a static home page. We wanted a home screen that we can edit however we want that doesn't get taken over by the blog posts. The default is the latest blog post will take over the last one. Last month we set we created a home page placeholder and we set it here as the home page. So get what do you think we do here then to complete this task? Posts page set that placeholder as the blog page. So every new article written will automatically go to the posts page. That's what this is saying on the home page on the front page of the site display the home page and then on the blog page display every single new article hit save at the bottom. Right. Question. I understand that it's a blended. We mm -hmm. can have part of it static and part of it. Yeah. Definitely. That requires oftentimes a specific theme. Mm -hmm. Depending on the theme, is there's gonna be a little corner for it to display your latest articles. It might not need to be a theme, it might be a widget. Mm -hmm. You might have a widget display my latest articles in the sidebar. Well, if your site doesn't have a sidebar, then it defeats the purpose. So it often depends on the theme and the widget to do, to do the blended, to do the hybrid, static and homepage, uh, static and blog homepage. So it's called blended? Or? I usually call it as a hybrid homepage, but blended is perfectly fine way to call it. And oftentimes we need to de describe what it is anyway, that it's static and displays a blog post, hybrid. Yes? The thing is that um, the themes over at Theme Forest are very good. I like them. They're very powerful with a lot of features, but it might not have everything that you need. You're not confined because you can go whenever you want over here to the appearance editor and change anything at all that you want. However, the editor is all about do it via code. So on any site you have full control if you know some code. Yes? If you change the code and then you update the theme, do you have to change the code again or does it keep the changes? Unfortunately, you have to, it'll, it will erase your code. We will, we'll, we will talk about updates very soon because that's a good point. If I customize my code here, if I change the color from red to yellow, and then a new version of the theme comes out and I click update. Well, it's going to give me the latest version of the theme code, therefore it'll erase my custom code. So we have a deeper discussion about that later, but yes, we, we would need to redo that or you know, save our code elsewhere and put it in. It's a little more complex. That's why we're going to talk about theme updates and such in just a moment. Well, that's why we're going to have a larger discussion about it. Short answer, yes. Long answer, no. Even though it doesn't sound that long. It's because it's a long answer. So. We'll see. Um, okay, so as my notes were saying, now we've set the blog placeholder as the reading setting here, front page displays. Okay, check. At this point, we would still not be complete because our menu has no button anywhere to go to the blog. So that's why the next step here. Set your blog placeholder in the menu of the site. We did this previously, and it was a long time ago, but does anyone remember? Where do we edit our menus in the dashboard? I 
think I heard someone say under appearance. Menus. Let's go to appearance. Menus. The default is that whatever new page or post or whatever that you add will not automatically go onto your menu. So beginners always get confused. I just created a brand new page and I can't see it on my site. Well, that's because WordPress is dumb and we didn't tell it. Okay, we created a page, but now show it on screen. We created a brand new page, blog placeholder. Select it, add to menu, and then now you can arrange it however you want. Remember, if you rearrange things, be careful because I just put my blog as a sub-item of my contact. I don't actually want that. I want it up here. So whatever you want, move it around if you'd like. It's top to bottom here, but on my design, it's left to right. Left to right. Save your menu, visit site, and then you should see now, after all of this, now we've got what I wanted, which is visit, visit site. Now I've got home, contact us, blog. And all the blogs, all the articles, there's the pecan pie article, there's the hello world article. All of these now have their own little page where they live in, and this will help your SEO, your search engine optimization, getting found by the search engines, creating articles. Once a month, 100 words. There's a lot more nuances, of course. Take the blog class and or the SEO class for more info. But did everyone get that blog page to work? I didn't get the pecan pie. I only get the blog.
All right, so um, that was these steps here. And then uh, the goal is then to write uh, 100 words once a month. You take the blogging class, and on, the, on day one, what we did was brainstorming to figure out ideas for everyone in class, because you want to create a series of articles. And again, we won't go too much further than this. But I wanted to show this, because this is, a, this is an intermediate to somewhat advanced level of WordPress because uh, regarding SEO this is very valuable. If you don't have content, if you have a great looking site but no one's visiting it still, most likely is because you don't have content that people are searching for or that the search engines can see as valuable. At the very least then we've got the pecan pie article and then later on you would write some more. Let's go back to the dashboard. Now we're going to have a discussion on updates.